Hey everyone, today I'm looking at everything you need to know about flying the multi-engine planes in Flight Simulator 2020. Flying a plane with multiple engines is similar to flying a single engine plane, other than the fact it's a little bit more complicated because you have that extra engine to manage and you have to plan a little bit more ahead of time because things happen a whole lot faster with two engines. I'm flying the Diamond DA62 today, but there are also two other multi-engine planes that you could use that come with the game. The first is the King Air 350, which is technically a turboprop, but for what I'll be showing you in this video, a lot of the concepts are going to apply even if they aren't specific to turboprops, it's more related to handling that second engine. There's also the Baron G58 if you've got the premium version of the game. I decided to use the Diamond because everyone has this plane, it's also a really great looking plane, and it's also a little bit simpler than the King Air and the Baron because it has constant rate propellers, which I'll get into in a couple seconds. The first question you might be asking yourself is why might you want to use a dual engine plane rather than a single engine plane? There are two main differences. The first one, obviously, is that a dual engine plane will be able to carry a lot more weight than that single engine plane because you're going to have double the amount of power available to you with the second engine. The second reason is it's obviously going to help you with your rate of climb to get up to cruise altitude. A second engine gives you that extra boost of power, which means you can have a higher climb rate all the way up to your cruise altitude. That being said, if you do lose an engine, you can end up in a lot of trouble. Luckily, in the game, that's only going to happen if we've explicitly told the game to fail one engine, or we've just shut down one engine ourselves. In a future video, I will cover how to handle the plane with a single engine, but for this flight, I'm going to look at operating both engines together only. I'm going to switch into the cockpit now so that we can have a look at a few things before taxi and takeoff. The first thing to be aware of when you're flying a multi-engine plane is to realize that you've probably got two of most of everything. Most obviously, you've got two engines, which means you're naturally going to have two different throttles. On a plane with variable rate propellers, you'd also have two prop controls. And then depending on the plane, you might also have two mixture controls as well. In some situations, you're probably going to want to control the engine separately. So you'll want to go into the controls and configure your bindings to do so. I have a throttle and stick combination, and obviously I only have the one throttle, which means that when I apply power or reduce power, it's going to apply that same change to both engines. So for me to operate them separately, what I've done is I've mapped extra keys on my Xbox controller to operate the power independently, depending on the engine that I want to affect. So what I've done is if I want to increase the power on engine one, I just press the X key and that'll only increase the power on engine one and A will lower that power and I use Y and B to do the same for engine number two. You could apply the same logic if you have variable rate propellers and you're not limited to just using the Xbox controller either. You could assign it to whatever you want on the keyboard. I usually recommend using the shift plus a number key because a lot of the basic keys on the keyboard have already been assigned to other things, but usually shift is pretty free. If you're operating the controls separately and you then use your main throttle and you adjust it, the two throttles are automatically going to resynchronize themselves like they just did right there. That can be good in some situations, but in a lot of situations you actually want to keep them separate, but just move them proportionally. I haven't found any way to do that, so if you have any ideas, please make sure to put them in the comments below. The other thing to remember is that since this is a dual engine plane, you're often going to have doubles of absolutely everything. In this case, I have two indicators for the throttle positions, two indicators for the RPM, since I can operate both engines separately, they could potentially have a different RPM, and separate fuel flow for each engine as well. A lot of the non-functional controls you'll notice as well also have settings for each engine, but most of these are inoperable in the game. Other things that are shared for both engines are only shown once, so the fuel quantity, the fuel temperature, that type of thing. Lastly, before we take off, I want to go over a couple of extra speeds when it comes to flying the multi-engine planes. You're probably already familiar with VR, which is the speed at which we pull back on the stick to start getting off the runway. Another airspeed which you might also be familiar with from the single engine planes is the minimum controllable airspeed. Anything below this airspeed and you're at risk of losing control of the airplane either in a spin or a roll that you just can't recover from. 
Rotation speed is usually about five knots above minimum controllable airspeed. So if you only know one or the other, you're pretty much set. The minimum controllable airspeed is usually represented by a little red line in the airspeed indicator. For some reason though, it doesn't seem to appear when I'm taking off and I'm guessing it's probably a bug in the game. Another airspeed to be aware of with the multi-engine planes is something called the single engine climb speed. That's usually represented as VYSE because it's an extension on VY, the best rate of climb for the airplane. VYSE is telling you what your best rate of climb is if you lose an engine and you're flying on that single engine. On takeoff, what I'll do is I will hold that VYSE speed for the plane until I've reached a minimum safe altitude that I can transition to my cruise climb altitude. That protects me in case I were to suddenly lose an engine. The single engine climb speed is usually re also represented on the airspeed indicator with a CN or blue line, but again, it doesn't appear in the game. All right, so let's get taxiing to the runway. I've actually got a ton of space here, so I'm not gonna request a pushback and I'm going to show you a technique to make a slightly tighter turn that you can do with a two engine plane. You wouldn't be able to do this with a single engine, but with two engines, what you can do is you can use differential power to make your turns a little bit tighter. So just as usual, you can use the rudder to start your turn, but you can also apply power to just the left engine, and that'll allow you to make your right hand turn a little tighter. So I'm gonna do that now in the hopes of avoiding cutting off this person right here who's there for our pushback. What I'll do is I will put my power to around 15 to 20% just to get us moving. I'm gonna apply full rudder, and I'm also gonna apply a little bit of extra power on the left engine, which is gonna allow me to turn just that wee bit tighter, and I think it managed to avoid hitting that uh, poor pushback person. <laughs> So you can apply that logic to any turn that you want to do a little bit tighter than normal. So say I wanted to turn left here, what I would do is I would apply a little bit of extra power on the right engine and you can see I'm not even using the rudder yet and it's already starting to turn the plane a little bit tighter. There isn't much else to see from here to the runway. So I may jump ahead and I'll see you on the runway. Okay, so I am now on the runway ready to go. The other thing that I'm going to do, which I probably should have done before I taxied onto the runway, is set my heading bug for the first turn that I'm going to do. Normally I would do this once I'm in the air, but because there's a lot happening with the multi-engine plane on takeoff, I like to set this ahead of time, just so it gives me a visual indicator of what my next move is gonna be. In this case, I'm just going to be staying in the traffic pattern, so I've set it to my 90 degree turn that I'm gonna do once I've reached a safe altitude. My flaps are already set in the takeoff position and my trim is also set. So other than that, I'm ready for takeoff. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of power to get moving. And you're gonna notice it's actually gonna take a little bit more power than with the single engine planes. That's because obviously a multi-engine plane is going to weigh a whole lot more than a single engine because you got that second engine. But once you actually get moving, you're gonna notice the airspeed comes up pretty quickly between rotation speed and your minimum controllable airspeed and your single engine climb speed. What I found is it's actually really hard to follow exactly what's prescribed in the pilot's operating handbook in the game. As you can see, my plane's already accelerated to 100 knots and I, I, I can pitch up at this point to reduce that airspeed a little bit to get closer to that single engine climb speed we were talking about which is around 87 knots but you can see my plane still accelerating and we are already climbing at around 1600 feet per minute so it feels in that sense like the plane's a little bit overpowered than what it should be so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to reduce power a little bit now because we want to stay in the pattern i don't want to be flying too fast so we've gone past the end of the runway, so I am going to turn onto my crosswind leg, and I'm gonna make this turn a little bit steeper than I normally do. 
and that's because I'm flying faster. So if I don't turn steeper, I'm going to end up overshooting where I actually want to be. So now that I'm at pattern altitude, I am just going to hold this heading and I'm going to hold this altitude. I'm going to trim the airplane to hold this airspeed. And 120 is actually even a little bit higher than I want. So I'm going to reduce power even just a little bit more to around the 60% level. There we go. And I'm going to try and trim to maintain that airspeed. So I'm going to turn downwind here. And again, I'm going to have to start my turn a little bit sooner than I normally would with a single engine plane because again I'm flying faster than I would with a single engine plane and if I don't want to overshoot my turn I have to turn either steeper or start my turn earlier if I'm making my turn let's say with a 10 degree bank instead of a 20 or 30 degree bank. Airspeed is really important to keep an eye on when you're flying the multi-engine planes. It's really easy to end up in a situation where you're flying too fast especially when you're coming in off a cross-country trip. Let's say I was arriving uh, a little bit faster than I wanted to be. What I would actually do is I would end up just doing a 360 degree turn in place. I would reduce power a little bit so that I can bleed off some of that excess airspeed and just have a slightly higher pitch attitude, which will give me the airspeed that I want, which is at around 100, 110 knots to enter and do the traffic pattern. So there we go. I'm pretty much all set up to get ready for my base turn. There isn't much to see between here and there, so I will skip forward ahead a little bit in the video, and I'll see you once I'm on base. All right, so I am just about turning on to base now. So the first thing to remember if you are flying too fast is don't forget you can use your flaps if you're in that white area of the altimeter. And also be aware of your gear extension speed as well. It's another tool you can use if you have some speed that you need to bleed off because you've been coming in too fast from too high of an altitude. Otherwise, the other thing that you really have to remember for these landings is that you have to start your turns a lot sooner than you normally would with that single engine airplane. It's very easy to overshoot your turns because you've got that extra airspeed. It's very deceptive and you can easily end up overshooting the runway. So I'm going to start my turn around now at the risk of undershooting it a slight bit just because I don't want to end up in a situation where I have overshot it and have to readjust. If you do end up overshooting the runway, what you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, you make small adjustments. You never want to make a big adjustment. You don't want to overfly the plane. This is true for single engine planes, but it's also true for multi-engine planes, and even more so because of all the extra power that they have with those dual engines. Once you're on final, really it's all about flying the approach exactly like you would with a normal plane. If you haven't watched my video on how to do that yet, make sure you do. I cover all of the basics that you're going to want to be aware of to make your landings a success. The only potential difference that you might have with regards to a single engine versus a dual engine plane when landing is that if you're landing in a crosswind, you have one extra tool at your disposal and that's the two engines. You could use that differential power that we were using on the ground earlier, but you could use it in the air to allow you to more easily deal with that crosswind. I'm going to cover that in a separate video because it's a whole other topic and I want to make sure to dedicate enough time to it on its own. And there we go. I am getting a little bit off track there. I wasn't paying attention to where I was going for a second and I almost paid for it. But that's really all there is to multi-engine planes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got some value, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you have any comments, please make sure to put them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.